What's up guys? Today I'm going to be talking about my Contax T2 after two years of ownership and letting you know the pros, the cons, and letting you know if this camera is worth it to own in 2022. So like I said, I've owned this camera for two years and the reason I came about buying this camera was because I was shooting a lot with this camera, the Olympus Stylus, um, also known as the MJU2, and I was shooting with that for about a year and a half, two years, and I liked it a lot, but it kind of just lacked a lot of the manual uh, settings and options that I wanted in a camera as an everyday carry type all around, like pretty much my only camera. So I was looking for something with more manual controls, and I wanted a camera that had some better glass on it because this camera has decent glass, it's 35mm 2.8, but it kind of missed focus a lot and it was just kind of like a soft lens in my opinion. So I was looking for something that had a little bit better optics and I kind of found myself always coming back to the T2. Some of the things that drew me into the T2 were the build, the body is titanium and it has a Carl Zeiss 38mm f2.8 lens. It has a handful of manual controls that the other cameras didn't have. It has aperture priority. You can switch from 2.8 to f16. And the flash setting is also its own setting. So I don't have to turn off the flash every single time I try to shoot. That was something that I kind of found annoying with my Olympus was that I had to turn off flash pretty much every single time I shot a photo because as soon as you close the clamshell, it resets to automatic. So being able to just open the camera up and shoot it right away was something that was sounding very pleasing to me. A few other things that drew me in were the options to overexpose the film and underexpose the film. On the contacts, you can switch around this dial and overexpose the film by up to two stops as well as underexpose the film by up to two stops. The overall quality of the build is really good. The titanium body is very, it's got like a nice heavy weight to it, but it doesn't feel heavy. It doesn't feel like you don't want to carry it around. Um, it's actually like a really nice quality feeling camera. And the controls on it are really nice and snappy. Switching the aperture on aperture priority mode felt really nice. It was nice that I could choose what aperture I wanted to shoot at at all times for the most part. Overall, the system and how they have it set up is really nice and intuitive. So I shot with this camera for about two years as my only 35mm camera. And I think that this camera serves that purpose very well. It's got a really good lens. The character of the lens is actually really nice and it feels like a lot of the photos we're taking on a more advanced manual camera. Even when this camera misses focus, it somehow looks good, which doesn't really make sense to me. The bokeh that you get out of the lens is actually impressive for being a little point and shoot camera. Overall, the photos that I've gotten out of this camera have been pretty amazing and I'm impressed with how well this little point and shoot performs. So this camera does have a infinity focus uh, option and I actually enjoy using this because you can just lock in focus at infinity when you know that your subject is focused at infinity. A lot of point and shoots when you're shooting like a landscape might focus on something in the foreground. So being able to focus at infinity manually is very nice and it gives you a lot of confidence when you're shooting landscapes like that. Speaking of the autofocus, uh, the autofocus works pretty damn well. I haven't really had issues with it back focusing or missing focus a ton. For the most part, it's been really good. I'd say out of 36 shots on a roll, I'd probably get maybe one or two out of focus. Something else that I wanted to mention with it being such an easy camera to use is that I found myself taking a lot of photos that I don't think I'd otherwise be able to take just because of the autofocus and having such a good meter in the camera. It's just a good easy camera to just pull out, take a picture, and not have to worry about focusing or getting exposure correct. Last summer I went on a trip to Tulum, Mexico with my girlfriend and this camera came with us pretty much everywhere. I think I used it more than any other camera that I brought and it's just simply because the camera is so easy to use and it's a good size where it's not a hassle to bring 
and being able to have that built-in flash that works really well it just became the camera that we brought every night and pretty much every day so with all that being said about the pros of the camera i want to mention some of the cons the 2.8 setting is also auto which means that when you put it in 2.8 it doesn't mean that the camera is actually going to be shooting at 2.8 so that kind of depends on the film that you're using and the lighting situation uh, the camera is not going to use 2.8 unless it feels like it needs to use 2.8 something that you can do to combat this is by shooting a slower speed film i found that shooting with those films helps the camera use 2.8 or a wider aperture more often another issue that i have with this camera which thankfully it hasn't affected me and I hope that it never does. But this camera is a little bit difficult to repair. It's a fully electronic camera and contacts slash Kyos. I think Kyocera made this camera actually. I think they designed it or built it or whatever. But contacts doesn't exist anymore as a, as a company. So finding parts for this camera and repairing it is pretty difficult. There are places that do repair it. But yeah, repairs on this are kind of far and few. So it's kind of a gamble to buy the camera. If you buy it, you better pray and treat her right because this camera could break at any moment and you could be in the bucket, a thousand bucks or something. So so the elephant in the room with this camera is the price. Um, it is pretty pricey for a point and shoot and I think it might be one of the most expensive point and shoot cameras aside from the Contax T3, which is the newer version of this camera, which is very nice. But yeah, it is kind of ridiculous how expensive they are. There is definitely like a, a tax to them. I think they're worth a little bit less than what people are asking for them, but every film camera at this time is pretty inflated. So that's just how it is these days, I guess. But I also would look into other contacts cameras and other film cameras in general. But if you want a good point and shoot camera that you can kind of trust with everything, the T2 is pretty solid. I can't really complain too much. If you can find a good deal on one, definitely scoop it up. So I know I've given the Contax T2 a lot of love in this video, but at the end of the day, I think that whatever camera you have on you is the best camera. And buying this expensive camera doesn't make you a better photographer. It doesn't make your photos any better, really. But I encourage you to go check out other cameras, other point-and-shoot cameras, because you can get very similar results with other point-and-shoot cameras that are a lot less expensive. So definitely go out there, try out some cameras, and have fun with it. Don't let expensive gear make you feel like you can't create something beautiful. So that's about all I got to say about the Contax T2 after two years of ownership. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments, and I'll see you guys in the next video.